Salvete omnes, welcome to this video lesson on Capitulum, Vicesimum Septimum, Chapter 27. Res Rusticae, Rural Things or Country Things. All right, and in the margin, in margine, aratrum, word for plow, which you see in the picture, frumentum, grain, semen, is a word for the seed, uh, seed on the head of the grain. Bene, bene. Et nunc. Fabula. Quid agit pater familias post meridiem? What does the pater familias, the sort of patriarch or father of the family, do? Agit. Afternoon, post meridiem. And remember that a.m. and p.m. come from ante meridiem and post meridiem before noon, afternoon. Primum quiescit. First he rests, tum ambulat, then he walks, denique lavatur. Then, at last, or finally, denique, he... And lavatur is passive, but as I have pointed out before, this usually sounds best if you say you do it your, for yourself. So he washes himself. He takes a bath, in other words. Uh, Julius Sigitur, Julius therefore, posquam paulum quievit, after he rested for a little bit, ambulatum exit, or after he has rested for a little bit, perhaps, he goes out, exit, to walk. Ambulatum is the accusative supine, which we've seen before. Yam desiet, now, um, Something has stopped, and then we get the, the subject, imber, the rain. So now the rain, imber, has stopped, desiet. Aves rursus, the birds again, in horto canunt, sing canunt in the garden. Dominus huke luc in horto suo amuino ambulat. The master, and this is Julius, right? is walking on Balat here and there, huk iluk, in his charming or pleasant garden. Now, a moinus, which you see out in the in the margin, it tells you equivalent of pull care. It's a word for anything that's sort of uh, beautiful and pleasing and just overall uh, wonderful. <laughs> this is where we get amenities from and also amenable in English. So a hotel with wonderful amenities is a place where you really want to stay, perhaps a resort, right? So a moinus here, pleasant, charming. Um, yes, beautiful is part of that, um, but sort of a whole round pleasing experience, right? So the master is walking here and there in his charming garden. Dende uh, exit in agros. Then he goes out into the fields. Qui hortum. Kingunt, the fields which surround the garden. So kingere, this verb kingo kingere, uh, kingsi kingtus, uh, it means to to gird, to belt. In other words, to go around something just like a belt does. Kingulum is one of the words for belt in uh, Latin, and it's, this root is related to cinch in English, as in you cinch up a belt. So um, the fields, agros, qui, which, um, belt or surround the garden, kingunt hortum. In agris, in the fields, frumentum crescit, grain is growing, weri, were et aestate, in the spring, were, and in the summer, aestate. Mense augusto, in the month of August, frumentum metitur, the grain is and you might be able to guess here, metitur, they're telling you in the margin that serere and metere are opposites. Metere is to plant, uh, sorry, to harvest. Serere is to plant. I think I pointed out semen for seed up above. That's related to the verb sero serere, sewe uh, setum, which means to plant. Okay, and then meto metere, this is again to harvest, to reap. What does that mean? It means to cut the stalks and thus uh, take the grain in. And then the seed would be beaten off the, um, the straw. 
right, the um, stem of the plant uh, once it was dried out and separated. That's called threshing. All right, so back to our story in line seven, Mainse Augusta in the month of August, Fermentum Metator, the grain is harvested et ex agris vehitur, and it is carried vehitur from the fields, out of the fields, ex agris. Dein de agri arantur, then the fields are plowed. Now, aratrum is the noun for a plow. We can see that up above in the margin. And we can see it in the picture, right? Uh, made from wood, and uh, usually the, the tongue that went down in could be a piece of metal. Or some of the early plows even had just wooden um, teeth that bit into the ground, right? But the Romans would, would typically have metal uh, plow teeth, right? Or plow shares, as they're often called. Okay, so aro arare, um, which we get first here in line nine with aranter, the passive um, present tense plural form. Aro arare is the verb for plow. So again in line nine, agri aranter, the fields are plowed. Et novum fermentum serator, and the new grain is planted. Okay, again, serator is coming from sero, serare, this new verb for plant. Qui agros arant, those who plow fields, ac fermentum serunt, and plant grain, et metunt, and harvest it, agriculae apelanter, are called. And this is one of the key words for farmers in Latin. There's colonus, which means farmer, and agricola also means farmer. So they are called farmers. But agriculae is coming from two roots. Agar, which means field, as in a field that you plant things in, not that distinguishes it from, say, compus, which is like just a field, a meadow, uh, where maybe animals might be um, put out to graze, but a compus is not planted typically, right? So agar is an agricultural field where you plant crops. And then the other part, the coal part in agricola, comes from the verbal root colo colore, which means to till or to cherish. Um, so in an agricultural sense, to till or to cultivate means to work up the ground and, and, and then to plant it and so on. And then again, colo colore can have a more uh, metaphorical sense of cherish or it can even be worship in the sense of worshiping a god. All right, but here it's from the more basic sense. So an agricola is somebody who tills or cultivates the agir, the field, right? Okay, so back to end of line 10, beginning of 11. Agricolae apelanter are called farmers. Agricola est vir, a farmer is a man, cuius negotum est, for, or, or whose duty it is, cuius negotum est, to till or to cultivate, colore, the fields, agros. All right. So just to note on ot otium and negotium, negotium, they're telling you this is similar to efficium, which can mean duty, um, what you're supposed to do, right? Um, otium is leisure, free time, vacation, Negotium, with the negative prefix, is all the other stuff. Task, duty, job, sort of career, the stuff you got to do to make the money to make a living, okay? All right, a farmer is a man whose duty it is, whose business it is, task it is, to till fields. Agricola arans, post aratrum ambulat. A farmer plowing arans, that's the present participle, walks, ambulat, behind the plow, post aratrum. So here we see arans, the present participle from aro arare, and also the noun aratrum from the same root, meaning plow. Aratrum est instrumentum. A plow is an instrument, a piece of equipment. Quo agri aranter, with which, quo, ablative case, fields are plowed. Arator, 
Now here is another noun from this root, right? Arator has the tor ending. The tor ending, or in feminine, the trix ending, indicates a person who does something, right? So an arator is a, we would call them a plowman. Okay, a plowman. Duos walidos boes, qui aratrum trahunt, praise agit. So a plowman, arator, drives agit. Two strong oxen, duos walidos boes, who um, pull the plow, qui aratrum trahunt, in front of himself. And of course, that means in front of the plowman. And we can see that if we look at the picture, right? You've got the two oxen hooked up to the plow, although I don't really see how they're hooked there. It's not well illustrated. And then, of course, the um, plowman or the farmer following along behind. Quomodo fermentum seritur. We're in line 14 and 15. How, quomodo, in what way, is the grain um, planted? Seritur. Agricola semen manu spargit. The farmer scatters spargit, the seed, semen, with his hand, manu. So they would have a little bag um, over their shoulder, hanging there, and they would just take their hand, reach into the bag, and as they're going along, they would toss that into the furrow. The furrow is the sort of ditch that the plow makes in the ground. Ex parvi seminibus, from the small seeds, quae in agro sparsa sunt, which have been scattered, quae sparsa sunt, two-word perfect passive, into the fields, or in the fields, in agros, frumentum crescit, grain grows. Mainse augusto, in the month of August, frumentum maturum est, the grain is mature, is ripe is ready, ready for harvest, understood. Quomodo metitur frumentum. How, or in what way, is the grain harvested? Falce metitur. Now you can see a falx out in the margin. Falx falcus, this is a, um, a sickle. All right, so it is harvested falce with a sickle. Falx est instrumentum. Uh, the falx, or the sickle, is an instrument, a tool, quo agricola metit, with which the farmer harvests. Quo instrumento serit agricola, with what instrument, with what tool, does the farmer plant? Qui serit nullo instrumento utitur, the one who is planting, qui serit, uses utitur, no tool, no instrument, nullo instrumento. And notice that that is in the ablative because utor is one of these special verbs. There are five deponent ablative verbs that take an ab ablative case object instead of the normal accusative object that most verbs take, right? So the person who plants, qui serit, uses utitur, no instrument, nullo instrumento, ablative case, Criter manum, except for their hand, okay? And just like I said, now I guess they could say they use a bag, but that's not much of a tool or an instrument, right? So they just take the seed and they throw it out with their hand. Qui arat, the one who plows, aratro utitur, uses the plow. And notice again, it's aratro, ablative, not aratrum, because utitur is a special verb that takes an ablative object. Qui metit, the one who harvests or reaps. Again, to reap is to cut the crop off. Falke utitur, uses a sickle. And again, falke instead of falkem, because utitur needs the ablative. Qui serit, the one who plants. Manu sua utitur, uses his own, or perhaps her own, hand. All right. Deus Agricolarum est Saturnus. The god of farmers is Saturn. Now, Saturn, or Saturnus, is a Roman name um, given to the father of Jupiter, the father of Zeus. In Greek, he's known as Cronus. And um, 
In Roman religion, Saturn is often associated with agriculture, not particularly so much in the Greek, um, but certainly quite a lot in Roman culture he's associated with agriculture. He's supposedly a god of the golden age where grain and you know produce just grew freely in the land and people didn't have to work hard back then. So the god of farmers is Saturn. Qui olim rex kaili fuit, who once, or once upon a time, olim, was fuit, the king of the heavens, rex kaili, said a filio suo yowe, but by his son Jove, or Jupiter, and remember those are just other names for Zeus, e kailo pulsus, driven from the heavens, from the sky, we might even say from Mount Olympus, if we want to get into Greek mythology a bit. In Italiam venit, came to Italy. Ubi eam regionem, quae latium appellatur, optime rexit, where, ubi, he ruled that region, rexit eam regionem, which is called, quae appellatur, Latium. And Latium is kind of in central Italy, right around Rome. Uh, the Rome and some of the towns around it are part of Latium. And the Latini tribe lived there even before Rome itself was founded. Okay, so where he ruled that region, region which is called Latium, optime, very well. Okay, so again here, we're talking about Roman mythology here, which is a little bit different from Greek, although it's quite related. In Roman mythology... Saturn um, became this king that ruled in Italy, and he taught the people everything, and basically there was, again, this golden age there. All was well. Latinosque homines utuncerant rudes ac barbaros agros colere docuit. And he taught, docuit, the Latini, Latinos there, uh, people as they then were, Homines ut um, let's say, not rude for rudes, but uncultivated, uncivilized, and barbaric, ac barbaros. He taught uh, the Latini people as they then were, uncivilized and barbaric. Well, what did he teach them to do? Colere agros, to cultivate fields. In foro romano, in the Roman forum, es templum saturni is the temple of Saturn. Ager qui mortum frumenti aliasue fruge fere potest, a field which, ager qui, is able to bear um, potest fere, and multum frumenti literally means much of grain. We would probably just say much grain in English. So frumenti is a partitive genitive, or sometimes called genitive of the whole, uh, it's like if we say a lot of something or a little bit of something, okay? Uh, a field which is able to bear a lot of grain or other crops, alias we fruges. The we on the end of alias, of course, just means or. It's a synonym for out, but we, just like que, will be added on to the end of a word and translated in front of it. All right, fertilis esse dicitur, is said to be fertile. Whole sentence together, a field which is able to bear a lot of grain or other crops is said to be fertile. All right, Italia est terra fertilis. Italy is a fertile land, terra fertilis. Said multa loca Italiae, but many places of Italy, non erantur, are not plowed, nec ulas fruges ferunt, nor do they bear any crops, fruges, or any produce, types of produce, prior herbom, except for grass. Iis locis, in those places, always porci, boves, pascuntur. Sheep, pigs, cows are pastured. Okay, so pascuntur, um, are pastured, are set to graze. This means they're let out onto the grass to, you know, basically eat that and grow, right? 
Nam herba es pecoris pabulum, for grass is the fodder of livestock. And pabulum here, which I translated as fodder, that's a word for food for animals. Um, so fodder in English means essentially food for animals. For grass is fodder of livestock. So pecus pecoris, livestock, this would mean essentially farm animals, right? That's what pecus means. And livestock can mean that in English. So again here, if you're not familiar with a lot of agricultural terminology, this chapter certainly has a lot of it. So I'm just trying to explain that. One more time then, pabulum is a technical word for animal food, thus fodder here, and pecus is a technical word for farm animals in general, thus livestock. Okay, et facilius est, and it is easier, pecus pascare, to um, pasture livestock, right? To graze livestock is another way you could say that, and that means to let them out to pasture where they eat grass and grow. It's easier to pasture livestock quam agros colore than to till the fields or cultivate fields. So some areas of Italy, uh, basically what this would mean is maybe they're too rocky or too hilly, and so they do well for running livestock on, but not so well, or maybe they're also forested. A lot of forested areas, they, they would raise pigs, but not um, you couldn't grow you know, grain and such. Hilly areas, mountainous areas, a lot, a lot of sheep, and so on. Praeterea, furthermore, lana ovium utuntur homines. People use homines utuntur, sheep's wool, lana ovium. Notice ovium is a genitive plural. It's got the eum genitive plural for eye stem. And lana has the long A ablative ending because utuntur, again, that's the verb utor uti, which is a special ablative verb. So instead of lanam, accusative for direct object, we need lana. Nam e lana westes efigiuntur. For nam, uh, clothes westes are made efigiuntur from wool, e lana. It's a quay, and so pecus maiores pretii est quam frumentum. Livestock is of greater value, maiores pretii, than grain, quam frumentum. Et qui pecus pascit, and the one who pastures livestock, plus pecunii facit, makes more, literally more of money, but we would just say more money by English idiom. So pecunii is the, the partitive genitive again. Uh, the person who pastures livestock makes more money, quam qui agros colit, than the one who tills or cultivates fields. Frumentum minoris pretiis, grain is of lesser value, quia magna copia frumenti, because a great supply of grain, ex Africa in Italium in vehitur, is carried, is transported in vehitur from Africa into Italy. Solum Africae fertile es, the soil or ground of Africa is fertile. Nisi aqua caret, unless it lacks water. Sed multis locis Africae parum aquae es, but in many places of Africa there is too little water. Ergo necesse est, therefore it is necessary, agros aqua fluminum rigare to irrigate, rigare, that is where we get irrigate from, by the way, to irrigate the fields, agros, with the water of rivers, aqua fluminum. Okay, good. Agricolae qui agros propenilum flumen cogunt, the farmers who, qui, um, Till the fields, colunt agros, near the river Nile, prope nilum flumen. Bis terve in anno metere posunt, are able, posunt, to, to harvest, metere, twice or three times in a year. Wow, bis terve. So terve is from ter plus the we, that means or. So two or three times a year in Egypt, they can get a harvest because the soil is rich, 
uh, from the the um, deposits that come down the Nile and because they're able to get the irrigation from the Nile uh, and of course there's plenty of sun there in, in North Africa they get wonderful grain harvest. Aegyptus enim terra fertilissima es for Egypt is a most fertile land quia solomeus because its soil aqua nili rigator is irrigated by the water of the Nile. All right. Bene, bene. And here we see a little picture, a map, Carta Geografica. Uh, and you can see Latium there. Um, this is, again, this is toward the middle of Italy, and we are on the west coast of Italy. You can see Roma, the city of Rome, and the Tiber River, Tiberis. And at the mouth of the Tiber River is Ostia, the port city of Rome. <clears throat> it's about 15 or 20 miles down the way there on the coast. And then Tusculum, um, toward the southeast of Rome, on the Via Latina. And Latium is this whole region around here. Um, and then further down, there's another region that they've labeled, Campania, Campania in English. And Campania, um, to get there, you follow the Via Appia from Rome. Um, and some of the important towns there in Campania would be Capua, Puteole. They don't have Naples marked on here, but Naples would be. Uh, Vesuvius is Mount Vesuvius, the uh, famous volcano. And Pompeii there. Um, Pompeii, Herculaneum, some other places in that region were um, sort of covered up by the eruption of Mount Vesuvius um, that occurred in 79 AD. Caprii that's labeled there is a little island off the coast there in Campania, and that's where the emperor um, Tiberius had his sort of resort home that he would retreat to sometimes when he was tired of Rome. We also see in the margin a close-up of the Mons Albanus, the Alban Mount or Alban Hill, and the Villa, the Villa of Julius, and Tusculum, the little town there. And we can also see Lacus Albanus, the Alban Lake. All right. Um, so that's just a close-up of the region around where Julius and his family live. Then underneath that, we see the Wheatus, which is a vine, and the Uwa, which is grape. All right, some more agricultural words. And let's jump into the story at line 45. Agri Julii, the fields of Julius, qui sub monte Albanus city sunt, which are situated under the Alban Mount, or the Alban Hill, we might say, Alban Mountain, if you prefer. And we can see that in the picture there. Non solum frumentum, sed etiam vites ferunt. Do not only bear grain, frumentum, but also, said Etiam, uh, vines, wites. And specifically, these are grape vines here. Ii agri, those fields, in quibus wites crescunt, in which vines are growing, winii decuntur are called vineyards. Fruges winiarum sunt uvae, the fruits, the produce, the crops of the vineyards, winiarum, are grapes, uvae. Quae mense septembri maturae sunt, which are ripe or mature, maturae, in the month of September. Ex uvis, from grapes, maturis, from ripe grapes or mature grapes, vinum efficitur, wine is made. Well, that gets us to the end of section one, so we'll 